You are listening to the Scribes Hangout broadcast on the Kingdom Influencers Network here at the Scribes Hangout. We are dedicated to bringing the voice and the heart of the scribe to individuals around the world. This is the hangout spot for book lovers, authors, artists, fans, business owners, and those who desire to be inspired. I am your host, Christian publisher, author, TV and radio personality, Deron Shay Zorn, and I would like to welcome you to our broadcast on today. It is such an amazing um, time in the studio on um, today as we have a very special author with us, a special woman of God um, that God is sending forth and unleashing for such a time as this. She is the author of the 24-hour rule, determining your dating partner's marriage potential in 30 days. My God. And so we're just looking forward to what God is going to unleash through this dynamic woman of God as she released the wisdom and the insight that God has placed on the inside of her. It is an honor and a privilege to have in the studio with us none other than D. Jure Campbell, dynamic woman of God. Just say hello to our listeners. Hello, Scribe Hangout. I am so happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. We're glad to have you here at the Scribes Hangout. And we're going to discuss this dynamic book um, today, People of God. So this is what I want you guys to do for me. Go ahead and share this broadcast on your social media platforms. You can text it out, email it out, just get the word out. However, um, you need to get it out in your circle of influence because we're having... Um, a powerful conversation on today. So if you know anyone um, that's in a relationship, looking to be in a relationship, looking to get married and things of that nature, they they just need to get on, um, on the broadcast tonight. Even for those who say, you know what, I just want to be single, right? Even those, amen. So there's nobody in your circle of influence that you should not be um, sending out this broadcast too. Go ahead and put it in your Facebook groups of, of, of those that you know would definitely be interested in this topic. It should be everyone, everyone, everyone is able to be touched when it comes to this area of relationship. Amen. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. And I know um, t- today, you know, and her book is dealing with the, the 24-hour rule of determining your dating partner's marriage potential in 30 days but that same thing some of these you know um principal in here guess what you can apply them to your business right because it's all about relationship at the end of the day because even in our business relationships and things of that nature those are lifetime commitments right hmm Amen. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just something to think about. So um, you, you should be getting everyone onto this broadcast on tonight. And so at this time, you guys know, um, before we go any further into the broadcast, we definitely have to um, go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we just bless your name in this place and we magnify you and lift you on high because you are the king of glory awesome in all of your ways i bless you god we bless you on tonight as we decrease so that you may increase in this place oh gracious god we thank you lord god that you would align our thoughts tonight with yours Almighty King, and that the words that are released out of our mouth, that they will come directly from your heart. What it is that your people need to hear in this hour concerning relationship. That, Lord God, that in this moment and in this hour, that even, oh God, in the, in the, in the determining factors of, of, of courtship and things of that nature, oh God, that the number one relationship, oh God, would be, the um, Lord God, the one with you, which is most important, Almighty King, in the majestic name of Jesus, that you will become the foundation in which who they are. 
through their relationship with you, oh God, and that the lives will begin to come into a place of alignment where they are prepared and ready, oh God, um, to form um, in a relationship with someone else, come into marriage, oh God, and to become one. That even, oh God, that they would know and understand in their singleness that they are still whole. Oh God, perfect in their entirety, lacking absolutely nothing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That even on tonight, oh God, that you would tear down the strongs of, of the enemy, the lies and the deception, oh God, that are keeping your people, your people, oh God, held in places of captivity, oh Lord God, where they have been ineffective in relationships within their lives because their very own relationship within themselves are not sufficient. Oh my God. Oh, help us in this place. Oh, yes, we need your wisdom. Oh, God, we need you to breathe on us. Oh, God, we need, oh, God, you on tonight, oh, God, to destroy the work of the enemy, to uproot, oh, God, every seed of darkness, oh, God, every uh, wicked seed, oh, God, that have been sown in our lives that have called us to be inefficient and ineffective when it comes to relationship even our relationship with you that no longer oh god that we would live contaminated lives that will hinder the relationships whether oh god in whether oh god it is a a marriage relationship or friendship or, or lord god um um relationships between siblings and relationships between a mother oh god and 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 her children our father and their children oh god in, in the majestic name of jesus and most importantly the most important relationship of them all that oh lord god that there would be no longer any hindrances or roadblocks oh god in the relationship with you oh gracious king have your way in this broadcast take over the airways oh god and the network systems and send words of penetration and activation that will transform atmospheres and lord god pierce the heart and the soul of man that they would align with your perfect word oh god in the majestic name of jesus oh how we give you glory and and praise in this place and it's in the majestic name of jesus that we have prayed amen amen and amen okay. hallelujah thank you jesus to god be the glory my god my god we are in the studio with um author d jeray campbell of the 24 hour rule determining your dating partner's marriage potential in 30 days amen in the majestic name of jesus you know dynamic woman of god we want to first get to just know a little bit about you where let the audience know where are you from and just a little bit about your background who is miss d deray campbell amen Yes. Well, I was born in Savannah, Georgia, but shortly after that, I was, uh, we all moved to Columbia, South Carolina, and that is where I was raised, and that is where I currently reside today. Um, just a little bit about me. I am what you would call a church girl. I was raised by a mother and father that made sure we went to church. If you spent the night to our house, you better have brought some church clothes because you're going to church. So it was that type of house. Uh, as for me and my house, they say, look, everybody in here going to serve the Lord, whether you want to or not. We don't care how tired you are. And I went to through the stage where I like to go out. I like to socialize. And even when I got into those stages where I like to hang out, till you know pretty late even though I had a curfew I think it was about 11 or 12 till I was about college age but even then my parents said listen I don't care what time you got in this house you go to church so church was a part of me I never 
I've made my share of bad decisions, but I've always had a love for Christ. I've always been a person that listened to what was being said, and I've always been that type to kind of research and verify what I heard (laughs) from others. And so um, as it pertains to relationships, what I realized, uh, I guess the more I would see people and the more I would date, I realized that, you know, we're supposed to be married. We're not supposed to uh, fornicate and none of that stuff. But I felt a little empty or I, I really didn't know how exactly to get to marriage. So that is where I was led to write my own guide based off of biblical standards. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Um, Word of God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, You said you, you, and and that's, you know what, that's absolutely powerful because you said you was, you was in the place and you was hearing, yes, you um, should be abstinent or, um, amen, um, until marriage, right? Um, but nobody was showing you the way. And so out of your curiosity, it led you to um, writing the 24-hour rule. So, uh, woman of God, um, my next question would be, how important do you think it is in the life of a Christian, amen, um, to um, understand your concepts that you have written in in this book yes i want christians to understand that this is a christian book uh it, i'm sorry it's a christian message it is based off of biblical principles so i actually use examples of a few books that i read that I feel like we're not for Christians. And we may all can think of specific people who are on very, very big platforms where they give relationship advice. But I emphasize the fact that this is a message that says you are dating for marriage. You are dating with a purpose, and that purpose is to get married. So when you are in that mindset, you are able to understand that this this is not recreational. This is something that's going to be generational. And we're we're breaking generational curses based off of who we connect with. And that is what I want Christians to understand. Oh, I just absolutely love it. Um, Not um, recreational, right? But generational, um, you know, so many times we have um, through our family lineage and we can just look back uh, on many families that can look back through the bloodline and, and they can see a lot of um, recreational dating mm-hmm. taking place and it have left um, society with so many parents, um, single parents, right? Um, to raise, you know, children by themselves or to raise them and, you know, um, or to have co-parenting as well. But but for the mass majority, um, we have single-parent households. And just from my standpoint, my God, um, you need two parents in the household. Can can a single person do it? Um, Yes, but it's it's a lot more work. It's, It's more strenuous you know um me and my husband we raised our boys together and i can't even begin to comprehend what a single parent household um would it is mm-hmm. like you know if it was two of us you know balancing and managing the boys right um you know being able to share the responsibilities and and the roles of parenthood um and knowing just even the pressure of that with two parents in the household um, is double or even more the um, the the stress or the weight that that's a good word the weight oh yes um, when it's just one parent 
my God. And so um, the, the, the recreation, or I, I love it to get from um, our family lineage from being in a place of rec, um, recreational, you know, um, activities to now here you are setting generational standards and, and boundaries and um, breaking the generational curses of single parenting um, as, as, as well um, as one makes a commitment to live by the principles of, of God and stand on and stand on his his word. Amen. Amen. Um, in the name of Jesus, I'm um, glory to God. So I just absolutely, absolutely love that. So, um, you know, dynamic woman of God, you know, I was um, in your book and um, I know you, you was talking about fear. And you was talking about how, you know, even, you know, when you was deciding to write this book. And, you know, you said you had naysayers, you know, saying, look, you don't have any experience in this and that you wasn't an expert in all these other things or what have you. But how you took a stand yeah. against the fear yeah. and against the naysayers and you stood up on the word of God. And you begin to move forward. I'm going to go somewhere with this question in a moment. So let's talk about moving beyond the fear and standing on the word of God. Yes, you have to. I believe uh, God definitely spoke to me in several, several ways. <laughs> it, it was, it's funny now because, I, um, I've been in conversations where the person started speaking and then they started ministering to me and saying, trust God, trust God. And I turn on the radio and I hear trust God at the same time where I'm telling myself I'm unworthy as well as, as well as hearing, hearing other people tell me, you know, you have no right to write this type of book all of that. Then at the same time, again, I'm hearing trust God. I turn on the TV. They're talking about trust God. I turn on a sermon in, on YouTube and they mention trust God. So uh, at that time when I was preparing to write and all of that, it that was what was ringing in my head. And, and I knew God was preparing me for a situation where I needed to trust him. Just like he told Jeremiah, listen, don't worry about how young you are. Don't worry about that. I am going to handle all of that. You just do what I ask you to do. And I believe I had a very, very similar experience as it pertained to that because I believed nobody would listen to me. And so then he sent other ministering angels to confirm and to encourage me to do that. And I'm talking about um, seasoned saints that when I spoke about relationship and they saw my passion, when we started talking about relationship, they said, you need to write a book. And I was like, huh? So I'm like, okay, let me get to writing. And then, so I started to feel really out of place. I um, called myself actually dating and a few of the people I was meeting, I mean, it just got ugly. And so I felt like, the spirit of the Lord was telling me, listen, you know what you're supposed to be doing right now. I'm not sending anybody even close to being qualified until you do what I ask you to do. So I talk about fear in a sense, but when there is something that God is asking you to do, you're going to naturally fear and there's going to be doubt because that's what the enemy wants you to think. But the person you better be fearing is God because at this point, I felt like, look, I don't want to not do it because I fear the Lord just that much. So that is my, my spiel about fear. Let me know when I'm talking too much. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your interview. Amen. Glory to God. And yes. So, yes. And so, um, I, and, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm coming somewhere with, with this fear and, 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 and standing on the word, word of God. Because, you know, when it comes to relationships and what we have, what the world has painted 
when it comes to relationship um whether secular world as well as some in some areas and places when it comes to the christian arena as well um that have been painted that has been in error when it comes Mm. to relationships and sometimes people become fearful to not um, operate inside the box right Um, and not operate inside the box because of fear the peer pressure and, and the fear of how other people are going to think what other people are going to have to say you know um when we are in environments and i do not um operate or act in the same manner of behavior than my colleagues act because i'm choosing um a lifestyle of holy standards i'm choosing a lifestyle of celibate i'm choosing a lifestyle to stand firm on the word of God and not operate like the world operates. Amen. Um, Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. And so I I, I wanted to just, I I wanted to deal with that because um, it's in every area of our lives. Amen. Uh, We're going to deal with fear. Fear is going to be there. Amen. But we have to make the decision. Amen. If, um, to starve our fears and feed our faith by standing on the word of God. Amen. So that you can fulfill, so God's word can be fulfilled in you. Amen. Um, in the name of Jesus, Lord mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. And I would add to that, you know, that you said those things, you have to realize Doing things God's way is not what's socially acceptable. You know, so people are not going to understand why you are choosing the celibate lifestyle, why you are choosing to follow God's standards, because they don't understand. They don't see the vision that God himself has given you. So they're not going to understand, and you're going to be criticized for that because it is not the traditional way that, or well, or what would seem to be a traditional way to get a date or to get a man or to date. So you must prepare yourself, listeners, for the, the criticism because people will tell you, oh, no, if you do that, you're never going to get married. You'll be waiting forever. He or she does not exist. So if there is somebody that you wanted, that you're going to God in prayer for, understand that God, his word is true. He will do what he say he said he will do. Those people don't know that, and they don't have the courage or the strength to actually stand on God's word. But you do. You do. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, the courage, the courage and the strength to stand on God's word. Amen. To, to stay in the plan of God or to get in the plan of God. You know, um, we, we're always talking about the plan that God has declared for me. Plan of good and not of evil. Amen. So even in... in Even with that in the plan. So let's dig here for one second. And then I I want to, um, I'm going to end that particular scripture talking about something you talked about in in the book. Amen. But it's still dealing with the plan of God. Um, But so with that plan as well, um, Delia, I want you to just, let's talk about your will versus God's will for you when it comes to relationship and dating. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even throw out an example because sometimes you have people who say, okay, or say or desire something or someone. And you talk about this in here as well when we did with those, um, uh, I think it's chapter four. You deal with something similar to what I'm about to say. And, um, but 
um, those who may see, you may see someone that you want, and they may be married. You got people who, you know, they praying for somebody else's spouse. Mm. Right. You you got people who, um, who you know, um, and 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 who you're praying for. Um, and, and I'm going to say it from two different perspectives when I say I'm praying for somebody else's spouse. So let's talk about it from the perspective of somebody's spouse who is married. That's number one. That They're married, right? And you know they're married. Mm -hmm. They're taken. But you see them, you like them, and you just feel that you got to have them. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then let's look for the other perspective because I also look at this as being somebody else's spouse um when you're praying even sometimes when you're in relationship and you think that somebody's supposed to be your husband and you just know that that's going to be your husband right you have this picture painted in your mind but it's really mm. somebody else's husband because you're in a legal relationship anyway oh <laughs> so let's talk about it <laughs> yes yeah, everybody's not for you, and you have to understand that. These, I'm pretty sure many of us have experienced where we've had someone in our life where we just knew, oh, this is it. I can go ahead and start, you know, looking at my colors and what I want the wedding to look like. Let me go ahead and have a minister on standby to officiate the wedding, all of that. But as you said, you might think that person is for you. It's only because of our decision that we have actually caused that relationship to last as long as it did. Because I can personally think of specific times where God was like, no, uh -uh, that, ain't, that ain't your husband. Or no, you need to go ahead and end this. But you're like, well, no, I'm lonely. I'm going to keep on, you know, talking to them. I don't have anybody else to talk to. Or I want to be able to go to the movies and see this with them. And so you drag it out. And then when it ends, you're distraught. And you're like, well, I can't figure out why in the world this ended. Because it wasn't your husband to start. It had to come to an end. So sometimes it's things that we do to cause something to end. But sometimes the ending is just going to happen anyway. It had to end because it wasn't for you. Or vice versa. You wasn't for that person, and that person wasn't for you. I love that that spin you just gave us. That was <laughs> that was profound. And you're sitting here, like you say, you're praying, and you, you know, you thinking that, oh, my husband, my husband. You putting his name in the scripture, the guy you're dating. <laughs> and God is like, okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you you praying for your husband, but that ain't gonna be him. <laughs> the right. one you're with. You ain't praying. You are praying. P R E Y. Yes. E Y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have us Jesus. Waste this time. <laughs> so we talk about yeah. this plan. We got a lot to discuss. I uh, got quite a few highlights, and I ain't even started in the interview yet. We haven't started in the interview, but uh, we're talking we about. We we talk about the plan that God has declared for us, right? And um, plan to prosper and not to be harmed, right? Um, for hope and a, a future or hope and an expected end. And so you you, you talk about um, in in the book of Woman of God, and you talk about how um, you know when you learn to recognize God's voice, and um, but you said this particular statement here. You dealt with eliminating long-term dead-end relationships, right? And I, I want to, um, and it's concerning, you know, the book. And and I, I want to talk about that. I just, I, I just highlighted those two words in this particular section. Um, as you're talking about that potential. Mate, and even as you were just talking about how we drag things along, right? And and sometimes we just need that extra guidance or that insight, or you know, we're told we need to have wise counsel. Yeah. Um, because sometimes we're in stuff way longer, um, than what we need to be, 
And so I did find it very, very interesting when you talked about, um, you know, in developing this, this plan and that you believe that it will help, you know, minimize, can I say wasted time? I think so. Amen. <laughs> so, I believe so what got you to that point? To where I could would call it wasted time or... Mm -hmm. Yes, that where you would call it wasted time or got you to the point, just even in your life would say, wait a minute, you know, I don't want to spend my time in um, mm -hmm. in a dead end relationship that's going nowhere. And I want to find a way to um, eliminate a, a, um, the road to nowhere, a long term um, road to nowhere. I want to get off this bus early. <laughs> yes. Well, I got to that by realizing that I still needed to do some self work and I mm -hmm. needed to understand who I am and what my purpose is. And I really believe if when you discover that, you will know very quickly it won't take you three five years to realize when somebody is not for you and you will make decisions based off of those facts you listen to what god is saying about you and then you'll know exactly who you're with and just don't ignore the signs because again using myself as the example which i do um, I've used a couple times in the book, you kind of know, you kind of know that things are not really going to last or you're not sure. And so you make a decision to overlook some of the red flags that you see. And usually we overlook those red flags out of fear, out of fear of being alone, out of fear of people looking at you wondering why are you still single? Why are you not seeing anybody? Because as single people, we get that. There was a young lady that made a t-shirt when holidays came around. It said, yes, I'm still single because that's all that your family is going to ask you. You still single? You're not seeing anybody? So it's that fear that we're trying to avoid. We want to just be with somebody or say we're dating somebody so that we can not be looked at as you know, some unwanted person. <laughs> well, that's where I, how I came up with that. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's something else that you spoke in here. You said, um, you talked about how one's, and I'm going to say it in the terms that, um, that I talk about it in, and, and you're going to, you know, be able to relate to it. I, I talk about, even for me, um, I talk about it in this particular fashion. You know, we are covered up with so much mess. And even when you were dating someone else's husband, mm. when you're dating somebody else's husband, he is covering you so that the one who God has called for you or made for you or prepared for you he can't even find you because even when he look in your direction you're covered whether you're covered mm. in a, a relationship where you are um with somebody else's husband right or whether you're covered mm. in the the hurt the pain the abuse right that you have acquired you know through life and also through other relationships and you you talk about it as being masked by layers of 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 lust and unforgiveness and worldly views about love that yes. you talk about it from a scent standpoint where like you know what I'm saying he can't smell your sweet aroma because you are sitting in filth in so many words mm. it's not quite in that um, yeah. written out that way <laughs> amen <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's absolutely right though you you're right that is a definitely another way to look at it because i uh i talked to 
uh, a client about that where she, is, you know, kind of had her boy toy and I had to remind her, okay, listen, you cannot do that. You know, when you, if you're waiting, you need to be waiting mm. because God is not going to introduce someone to you that you now have to go scrambling, trying to release yourself from this other person. So if you're waiting, you must sacrifice. You must turn down your flesh daily, you know, in order to stay focused on God and to prepare yourself for what is to come. Because I know for myself, I I don't want to meet anybody that's in a situation. If I if you're in a situation, I'm going to think, well, no, you still you need to handle that situation. I'm not, you know, so your potential spouse could know, they could feel that same way when they see, oh, my goodness, you, you, you still have someone, you know, that you're trying to break up with or this mm. person, you know, is heartbroken because we're no longer together. You're no longer together with them. You know, eliminate all of that. If you're going to wait on somebody, wait on the one, wait on that person. I don't want nobody hanging around, leaving evidence that they've been to my house. No. That's when good. you come over here, if I say I'm not talking to somebody, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not on the phone with anybody. I'm not texting anybody in that particular way. And that is exactly what I mean. You have to get those people out of the picture because God ain't going to bless no mess. Come on now. It's kind of like, too. I'm sorry, not to ramble on, but it's kind of like, you know, Deronche, why would I? <laughs> okay, if I'm if I'm recommending somebody to you for a particular service, if I know they're extremely busy, I wouldn't recommend that person to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be anything. Okay, Deronche, you need some yard work done. Oh, I know somebody. Oh, but he only available on Tuesdays after 3 o'clock. Well, you know, no, I need somebody that is available, you know, and I can they can work off of my schedule, not me having to work off of their schedule. If they're too busy or they have a thousand other things going on, why would you send this person to me? And I feel like that's what God is doing. When he wants to present you to your spouse, women, he wants to present somebody that is ready. He's not presenting someone who's still trying to, you know, go ahead and get this out of the way and I, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that. That's good. That's, that's... Child, let me hush. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's good right there. So while you're talking about all that, let's deal with this pretense because I believe that just right, that rolls right over into pretense. And, you know, even when you said, look, if I'm on wait, then... Why not wait for the real thing? I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not wait for the real thing? I got to wait for you to get over all of that other stuff that you're dealing with. You know, why not just wait for the real thing and then vice versa? And then vice versa at the at the same time. And so that leads us into what you talk about with pretense, right? A pretense love. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have some conversation about that. What is it in, um, Amen, Glory to God? And what do we need to change when it comes to that particular narrative? Yes, pretense love is love that is not real. It is something that is presented itself as such, and when you get a hold of it, you realize very quickly that is not the real thing it is a cubic zirconia <laughs> zirconia <laughs> of, uh, of of love yeah it is not real it is cheap it is available it is easily obtainable you have to make little effort in order to obtain it and so that is what that pretense love is and I say in my story and that is the first chapter, everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we are have been conditioned to believe in pretense love through the songs we listen to that talks about 
how a person makes you feel and how, you know, you want to to touch someone or you want how that person wants to make you feel or how it, you know, how they look at you, all of that stuff. And that's okay, however, but that is not love. When we look at cartoons, even from little children, we were taught to believe that when this night, um, when this person came in riding on the horse and they gave them that first kiss that, okay, they're automatically in love and they live happily ever after. And that is not what love is. So we have to realize that that is not real. And we must go to the word of God for him to let us know what love is. And I list some examples of the scriptures that we look at in First Corinthians where, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love um, endures all, all of those things. And we kind of look at those scriptures to mean that we're supposed to just sit there and take everything that a person gives us. And not necessarily true. We're supposed to actually look at that as some of the things that could happen in your life naturally. We're being patient because, you know, we're, you know, we're trusting in God for a great career move. We're trusting in God for, you know, to heal my leg after breaking it when I fail. You know, we're being patient in those areas. I'm being patient with my spouse when I know they're in pain and I can't, you know, they, they're doing the best that they can. And I know they're, you know, they are frustrated because they're acting out, not someone that is physically and mentally and sexually abusing me. I'm not being patient while they're doing those things to me. So those are the things, some of the examples that I give to where we have to realize there's pretense love and then there's what God says love is. Amen. I'm about to tell you the whole chapter. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) I got to leave something for y'all to read. Right. Amen. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You said, look, y'all got to get this message. Amen. You got to get this message. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you know, um, God doesn't um, bring or send us, um, spouses to that will beat us right or um abuse us mentally emotionally psychologically amen that ain't a part of god's plan for our lives and amen people of god and that's another reason why we gotta allow god to make us whole amen um word of god amen Jesus. um so that we won't get entangled in those type of relationships and get caught up in the lies and the deception of the enemy to think you know what this is love because it's not, you know, they'll, um, you know, they say they'll hit you and say, you know, I, I, I love you. And that's, that's not love. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, in the name of Jesus. And out of desperateness and not want to be alone or um, feeling that um, someone, um, you need the person's resource. Right? Because sometimes mm-hmm. if we really be truthful about it, you got a pretense in love as well. Amen. Great God, thank you, mm-hmm. Jesus. Where you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm in it because it's beneficial for me, right? Yes. It, it, you know, it's beneficial for me financially. It may be beneficial for you, or you know, romantically, it may be beneficial for mm-hmm. you. And so that's still a, a pretense, right? You, yes. You're not in yes. it for real love. And so, um, when when you have those motives. When we have these motives going on, you know, what you sow, you reap. And I'm not saying what you reap is right. That's not what I'm saying. Oh. But what mm-hmm. I am saying, if we get our hearts right and we get in line with the word of God and we allow God to cleanse us and, and, and heal us and set us free, then we will look at relationships in a whole nother different way. It won't be about what I can get out of you. But what yes. will God do with us together? Amen. That's a whole Ooh. nother thing. Amen. But I ain't going to go there today. Yes, sure y'all. Is. I hope y'all got some time because <laughs> we can take this so many different places. Right. Yeah, but that's, that is absolutely. We probably have to do a part two. It. And we have to understand it does. it has nothing to do with us 
And that is just what I'm feeling in, in my heart. After doing mm-hmm. the research, doing the self-work, we think that we want the benefits, but no, the, the glory belongs to God. When he puts you two together, it is for his purpose. It ain't got nothing to do with you, with you and what you want. Uh, you can still get what you want. I'm sorry. I don't want to make it seem like you're not going to get what you want. But we go in thinking that it's all about me, me, me. And it's not. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Um, when, when it said, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so, amen, glory to God. When the Lord becomes your shepherd. Come on now. You shall not want. Amen. And so, mm. when he hook you up, you ain't going to want in anything because, amen, uh, um, the hookup is going to provide everything that is needed to sustain yes the ministry or sustain the whole purpose in which God brought the union together. Amen. And so it ain't even going to be about the things that, you know, the, this is what I want. No, what do he want? And he is God. What do God want? Amen. And so when he mm-hmm. becomes our shepherd, we shall not want. Amen. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, glory to God. But amen. Hallelujah. Look, this chapter two, it's talking about, uh, it, it's titled Nothing to Lose, right? And, I mean, there's some things yeah. in here to talk about. And, you know, I was going through it. But you talk about, I, I want to uh, give your relationship moment here, right? You, you said, um, pay close attention to, to your dating partner's full-time responsibilities. Having yeah. none could warrant a nothing to lose spirit. So I want to talk about that nothing to lose spirit and um, those th- those response of paying attention to um, those full time responsibilities, right? Uh, let's let's deal with it. How can that affect um, a, a, a marriage? Because we're looking for we're in it to win it. We're looking for um, longevity. Amen. We're looking for marriages that win. And in Jesus' name, come on. Yes. Yes. So in that chapter, I'm talking about just a a red flag that is usually overlooked. You have the person that does not own anything. They don't even live. Uh, Their name isn't even on the, the lease of the house. They have several roommates. They um, probably are uh, takers. They don't even wash their clothes at, you know, their own house because they want to use somebody else's stuff. So in a sense, you may begin to feel like, oh, this person is always over here and, oh, we get to spend so much time together. But really, they're just using you, (laughs) using you and sucking you dry in a sense. Hate to put it like that, but yes. But, and it's because they would rather utilize other people's resources Mm. than go ahead and obtain their own resources. And with that, they are, they can easily walk away because they have not invested anything into the relationship. So in that scenario, the, um, the young man, you know, asks the girlfriend for help. And she helps him. And he's, you know, putting off the things that he said he was going to do to better himself. And he keeps putting it off and putting it off. And she's doing everything she can to be supportive. And then when the walls came, you know, closing in or when he felt like his luck was giving out, I'm sorry, was was, um, running out, Use your imagination when you read this chapter because there are, you know, everything's not answered in this scenario. But if you use your imagination, you might assume that, okay, he may have gotten another girlfriend and that's why he walked away or he realized his luck was running out or his resources was running out with this particular um, girlfriend that he was with. So, therefore, at the end, he ends up leaving the woman for another woman. So he did this same thing 
not only to the woman he was dating, but also to his roommate. And she discovers that later on. He had a male roommate that came back and told the girlfriend that, yes, he did not leave. He left me because he never paid the rent. Or he left, not me, I don't want to say it like that. He left our apartment that we were renting together because he stopped paying. But he made the roommate look like the bad person. So this person is very charming. They're very well-spoken, but very, very, very manipulative. And it's always somebody else, somebody else, and somebody's doing this, and this is what happened, and blah, blah, blah. So that can go both ways, male or female. And you have to just pay close attention to those that have no responsibilities. They can easily walk away, and they avoid doing anything that, would require them to be responsible. And so there it is. <laughs> amen. 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 You know, in your, and, and that's good because it flows to, um, in, in chapter three, you deal with past relationships and you deal with the observation, ob- observing your past so that you can um, meet and truly greet your future self in a, healthier way right and and, and you deal yeah. with um going down the journey um a past relationship lane and really doing some self-evaluation with being honest with where you are where, where you've been and where you are and and taking um the truth from those evaluations for those evaluations and 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 determining what what's necessary for you to make life changing um, characteristics, so that you would no longer repeat your past. So, um, this particular chapter, um, woman of God, how important do you believe it is in an individual's life so that they can move forward in having healthy boundaries within themselves? Um, so that um, they would be in a position or how can they be better positioned um, for um, the marriage that is to come? Well, yeah, this is a very important step. Uh, Definitely want to take a look at your role in each relationship that you have had. And I would look at Every, the type of people that you have been dating, how you met the, those people, why it ended, all of those things, because you may notice a particular pattern in your relationship. And those are the, the things that you have to really pay close attention to, and it may require some deliverance from You may require that um, events from your past, if someone, for instance, you know, was molested at at an early age or, you know, sexually abused or assaulted, that may have affected them in a certain way without them realizing it right away. And so you'll notice a, a pattern. You'll notice, oh, well, I always, you know, talk to, you know, men that are older or I always talk to men that are younger or whatever the case, but you realize okay, maybe it was an older man that touched me inappropriately or, you know, hurt me when I was younger. So now I hate older men. I only talk to younger men. You know, whatever it is, you have to get to the bottom of it. And it's going to be a painful process, but it's necessary for you to see why you are having those dead-end relationships, so to speak. Because although you might be married, I'm not married, but dating someone else's husband, you may also be sabotaging your own relationships as well. The people that you have been dating could have very well uh, wanted to marry you, but it was something in you that didn't want to open up, something in you that was mean or whatever the case. And that's what you have to discover in order to set that 
that woman of God or that man of God that you really are called to be free. And until you look pride in the face and go toe to toe with pride, as I call it in that chapter, that you're going to always be who you currently are. Amen. 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 You know what this, this dynamic woman of God is, is quite a few things. Let me just end this book. I, this particular thing, um, this particular 24 hour rule moment, um, that I, we're going to get ready to talk to next. And it's coming out of chapter six. We may go back and deal with some other things from the other chapter, but this particular rule here, when I read it, I was like, bingo. Amen. Um, chapter six title is God, God wants the same from you. And so, um, in the rule moment, she wrote, never expect others to give you what you are not willing to give God. Woman, a guy, give us some insight behind that one. Yes. Yes. That chapter is where I became very personal. That was all about me, readers and listeners, <laughs> all about me. And I was, um, talking to a person who was in um, a very, a life or death situation. And I was very um, supportive and, you know, thought that he was the one. And I realized later on uh, when things ended that, um, that he wasn't the one. But at the same time, when I realized why things ended, I got mad. I got mad and I got angry. And in my anger, I began to ask God, how could he do this to me after being such a wonderful woman to him, after uh, being supportive, after being a great friend, after everything, everything I questioned and asked God, why God turned around and answer me, well, honey, I should ask you the same thing. Mm -hmm. How could you put me on the back burner when I did all of this for you? As soon as you met this person, you were gone. You barely came to church. You barely talked to me anymore. Mama. So the same way you feel is the same thing you did to me. And so that was a very eye-opening experience for me, and I immediately felt shame which led me to repenting it did and it um and it, i just got came to the conclusion that no i'm not gonna put anybody else before god he is literally as the ladies say before they begin to speak first giving honor to god who's ahead of my life <laughs> i knew exactly i can say that with confidence he's the head of my life i, I don't i don't want to experience that again because he, I'm going to keep him as the head of my life. Because I don't need no more reminders. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Oh, my. Oh, bless Y'all, I'm crazy. I'm a clown. Oh, bless me the name of Jesus. <laughs> said oh yeah <laughs> amen she said I know who's the head <sighs> that's right I just up here saying it because everybody else said I mean that God is the head of my life you said reminded this. me honey oh lord Jesus you said this in your book woman a guy you was dealing with in um, chapter 4 you, you dealt with um, in the don't believe the hype about other relationship books don't believe the hype <laughs> oh my god yes. and um the, the other things that take place um so we definitely want to make sure that we deal with uh, as you talked about um when dating believers uh, of christ are to hold themselves to a greater standard than non-believers but then you also um go in here and you deal with um you know just several different things that has um that have come across in other books to, um, relating to to dating. Um, that was I'm like, Lord, help the single people, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So yeah, let's talk yeah, about this. Yeah, people publish this stuff. <laughs> yes, there are a few examples I gave 
I will not uh, say those examples, but in those examples, I felt like the writers, who were all men, by the way, in the examples that I used, um, not all of those authors, but um, I'm, I feel like a couple of them may have used their words to manipulate their readers, you know, the female population. And so some of the, the tips and tricks that they are suggesting you do, it is for um, the man's benefit. And they're, you know, suggesting that if you want the ring, then you will do these things. Mm. And I only list a few examples, but again, I want to be that voice that reminds believers to trust God, follow his plan, do it God's way, because God's way will not lead you down those paths that those other authors are suggesting. Um, there are more risks than rewards when you use those other tactics, so to speak, because you may, you may get the ring, but I promise you, you may not have peace. You may not have joy. You're just going to have a house with a bunch of stuff and you don't have a marriage. You'll just have that ring. That's exactly what you wanted. So understand exactly what you are setting yourself up for when you use standards that are not based off of biblical principles. Amen. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, hallelujah. It is not. Marriage is one of the things that is the most, um, is a, um, the most serious, um, partnership or relationship. Let me not use partnership because some people marry for partnership for real, for real. But, um, it is the most, um, overlooked relationship um and it should be the most severe and serious um matter that one have in their life because it is a life altering decision and it is a it is set up it is God designed it to be a long life right um that once it's done right that that you're with the one that the one you marry is the one that you would be with for um, the remaining of your life, right? Or the remaining of theirs, which, whichever one to death do your part. That's what the vows say. But we take it very, very lightly, um, people of God. And I think we need to have more conversation um, about it so that we wouldn't play around with this, with this thing called marriage and... Um, with with marriage because it is one of the most serious things that you would ever do in your life um dynamic yeah. people of god and so we need to um, be a little bit more serious when it comes to it um as well amen glory to god i'm gonna ask her one more other question and then i'll give the titles of the other chapters but you guys just have to go out and and, and grab this book to I'm really here with the woman of God is saying the other thing I want to make sure that we do get to discuss this um Ray, is this um what does what does the 24 hour rule mean does it mean yeah <laughs> what does that mean it means that you should spend a certain amount of time with the person face to face before you make a decision to move on. I'm answering the question, but it is not 24 hour rules. I'm sorry, 24 hours in a day. You want to spend at least four hours at a time with the person until you get to the 24 hours and the purpose again is so that you have face-to-face conversations 
the purpose of the face-to-face conversations is for you to experience each other, to be able to look in each other's eyes, to be able to get to know a person. We're not necessarily going to the movies and spending that time not talking. No, we're using that time to get to know each other. And then within those times or that 30-day period where you're getting to know the person, you're actually talking to God. We're not talking to family. We're not talking to friends. We're not calling the homegirl up saying, hey, this and this happened. We had such a good time. What you think? Girl, he might be the one. None of that. We're using that time to actually get to know, see what's going on with no scales over your eyes. You're praying and you're asking God to keep my eyes open. Uh, Show me whether or not this person is the one for me. Because, yes, your flesh is going to be attracted to that individual. Your your senses are going to smell that good smelling cologne. And you're like, oh, goodness, girl. And now all of a sudden you can't focus. You're thinking about the cologne and you're not thinking about, you know, the words or the conversations that you're having. So you want to, when I develop that, that rule, it is to make sure people stay focused and establish a relationship with God in the plan. God is in that relationship in the early stages. God is in, he's in the relationship for, at the early stages, but you are also sacrificing time spent together. But you are going to God in prayer about that person. If both parties can actually use the plan, that is great because you both will be on the same page. And so another aspect that goes along with the rule, you're only dating one person at a time. We're not on the bachelorette or the bachelor show. So we're not juggling around three and four different people. We're, we're focusing on that one person because I will be honest, I've gone on dates and the first date, you know, you might be nervous or you, you may feel like there's not a connection. You may feel like this person, um, you're not, you know, really being yourself, but maybe after the, the second or third date, you're able to, kind of show your true colors and then on the flip side of that if a person is not being themselves or they're being unreal one of two things are going to happen they're not going to spend another four hours with you or they're going to show their true self that's what's going to happen so you want to follow a plan follow a rule that is rooted in christ that has god in the picture Because if you do decide after the 30 days of getting to know each other to go forward, which you will have a conversation, that's what I suggest, after those 30 days or after spending 24 hours together, you two will be able to have a conversation that says, look, I I think we can continue to get to know each other more or no. After what I've learned you're a very awesome person, but I don't think you're the person for me. And that way there is a closure. There's no ghosting. There's no disappearing and calling somebody back in a month or two after they realize the next relationship didn't work. You're actually making adult decisions and you're going um, with something that is a sure plan. And then the last thing I'll say, if you establish this habit while you're dating, when you get married, prayerfully, that is a habit that will carry over into your marriage. You will follow that rule. Maybe that can be a secret word or code that you all use. All right, 24 hours. It's been 24 hours. You know, where you could say, look, we need to spend our time together. We need to, you know, take 30 days of spending at least four hours together in order to rekindle our relationship or in order to keep it going and to keep God in our ear versus other people. So there is a method to the madness, guys, uh, because every, when they hear 24 hours, huh, how are you going to know somebody in 24 hours? Read the book. Read the message. 
get it, use it, and I promise it will not lead you wrong. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I just had so many toss up between the, the questions and the, <laughs> was struggling between the questions that I want to ask and um, the, just the mind and the heart behind the woman of God and the different things that she said and um, or, or what have you. But I, I'm, I'll just tease you guys just a, just just a little bit. Um, amen. Glory to God. Um, thank you, Jesus, because there's just so much um, in here to talk about. Amen. Yes. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. Um, she said in her book that um, it will behoove you to create a vision for your marriage, future, and spouse while you are single. You got to get the book to read about it. Um, she also says in her book, prepare to become a wife before he finds you. Um, hurry up and come and get the book um, so that you can be prepared. Um, her title, her chapter titles include um, Baby One, um, Chapter One, Baby, That Ain't Love. Chapter Two, Nothing to Lose. Chapter Three, Past Relationships. Chapter Four, Don't Believe the Hype About Other Relationship Books. Chapter Five, The Myth About Sex. Chapter 6, God wants the same from you. Chapter 7, faith without works. Um, Chapter 8, saved and sensual. Chapter 9, the truth about the quality man. Chapter 10, preparation is key. And she have her final thoughts. She also have discussion questions, right, that that you can use, right? You and your... Um, your, your 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 boys or your girls can can get together and just have some group sessions, right? Or if you're over a single ministry, that you guys can uh, grab this book and uh, begin to help out the singles within your community, right? And within your reach or your circle of influence as well. So let's figure out how can you get in contact with this dynamic woman of God and how can you grab this book that God has placed on the birth on the inside of her. So um, DJ Ray, um, can you let the audience know how can they get in contact with you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Just simply search my name, D, the letter D, Jaree, J-A-R-E, last name Campbell. And you can also email me if you have questions. I go live and I talk about various dating topics and uh, people send me questions all the time about their dating scenarios. So that email is the number 24, the letter H R. Another R U L E at Gmail dot com. So it's twenty four H R rule at Gmail dot com. You can uh, find me any of those places. I'm also on Twitter and Periscope. So um, I'm pretty sure if you just type in my name, all of those avenues will come up. But I'll tell you my email address again it is the number two the number four letter h letter r another r u l e at gmail.com amen amen and amen you know we've been having a powerful conversation here at the scribes hangout it's been so powerful we didn't even take a break <laughs> in the name of jesus but we bless the name of the true living god we was just engaged in what it is that god needed to release in the life of his people my god but we bless god anyhow it has definitely been a powerful interview with um author d trey campbell amen as we have discussed Her book, The 24-Hour Rule, Determining Your Dating Partner's Marriage Potential in 30 Days. I'm on a pause right there for the pause. Woman of God, can you tell the listeners, how can they pick up a copy of your book? Yes, 
you could order the ebook or the hard copy on Amazon. And uh, I also have copies that I sell um, as well. And you could email me and I could let you know how to get your copy directly from me. But yes, if you um, use Amazon, you could definitely order through there. Okay, awesome. You can order your ebook or your hardback for Amazon. If you want a personalized copy directly from the woman of God, definitely, definitely, definitely go to her email and an email her at 24HRRULE at gmail.com. That is 24 hour rule at gmail.com. Also, I'm sure you can DM her on any one of her social media platforms amen yes. um in the name of jesus and she would definitely get you that personal lies copy in the majestic name of jesus my god you guys have amen. been hanging out at the scribes hang out with none other than your host amen um christian publisher author Amen. Deron Shea Zorn and our guest, DJ Ray Campbell of the 24 Hour Rule, determining your dating partner's marriage potential in 30 days. You know, here at the Scribes Hangout, we are bringing you the voice in the heart of the scribe. My God, in the majestic name of Jesus, our scribe, our scribe moment, our scribe moment for today. Our scribe moment for today is this, dynamic people of God. If you don't write it, it cannot manifest. Pick up your pen and begin to scribe. You'll be wow. amazed in what God will produce through you. In Jesus' name. Um, let's conclude our Scribes Tip of Today. We want to thank you for hanging out with us at the Scribes Hangout. And we look forward to you joining us next week. Don't forget to connect with us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Scribes Hangout. Also remember to subscribe to our broadcast by visiting www.kingdominfluencersbroadcast.com slash the scribes hang out in Jesus name until next time remember to scribe amen amen and amen to God be the absolute glory thank you Jesus hallelujah